Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Hope you're having a great Saturday. I'm Galen Etlin. We've got lots of news to get to here and we begin with health officials in Washington who say now is the time to get your child vaccinated, not just for COVID-19, but for the flu as well. Our Tim Gordon breaks down the vaccination rates for us. The flu season is upon us, and so far it has been quiet in the Northwest. But experts expect when it hits, it will likely be big. They predict there could be as many as 600,000 hospitalizations in the U.S. this season, compared to an average season with 200,000. That's why I'm here today, for me to make a plea for everybody to get the flu vaccine. Dr. Alan Melnick is public health director for Clark County and the health officer for other counties in southwest Washington as well. He is concerned that in Washington state, flu vaccinations are down 25 percent from this time last year for kids from six months to five years old. Why? The doctor can only make an educated guess. And yes, COVID-19 is part of the answer. Overload of the health care system, there may be fewer visits um, uh, for it. Maybe the politics have something to do with it around, uh, you know, it, it's always a, it's always been a struggle to get flu vaccination rates up. But Melnick says it could be a particularly bad time to get the flu with other ailments out there. The coronavirus at the top of the list. This is a time of year when other respiratory viruses begin to circulate, which is even more reason why every anybody who's eligible for flu vaccine and anybody who's eligible for a COVID-19 vaccine should be vaccinated. And because last flu season was super light, our immune systems may be more susceptible to getting it this year. So health professionals say if you've waited, wait no more and get the flu vaccine for you and your kids. Flu vaccine is eligible for anybody over the age of six months. Everybody over the age of six months should get flu vaccine. And Melnick says if you're eligible and haven't gotten vaccinated for the coronavirus, get that too for yourself and your community. Tim Gordon, KGW News. And as health officials urge everyone to get the flu shot, some local kids 5 to 11 got their COVID vaccines today too. This was at Legacy Health's Randall Children's Clinic. Vaccines are free and the check-in process there is quick without much waiting. Trained professionals help make that all run smoothly. This vaccine is our greatest tool to uh, reduce uh, risk of COVID infections in children, uh, reduce complications of COVID-19, and to reduce those interruptions that have really affected them in uh, profound ways. That doctor also emphasized how safe the vaccine is and encouraged people with concerns and questions to talk with their primary care physician. Well, this is the headline everyone is talking about this weekend. A jury in Kenosha, Wisconsin says Kyle Rittenhouse is not guilty of murder after killing two people during protests and riots in 2020. Rittenhouse maintained he did act in self-defense, and after that verdict, high-profile Oregonians have reacted. Governor Kate Brown released a statement saying, we have a lot of work to do as a country in building a more just and equitable future. In Portland, Commissioner Joanne Hardesty wrote, we have an injustice system in America. And Mayor Ted Wheeler called the verdict profoundly disappointing. State Representative Andrea Valderrama spoke with KGW one on one last night. We really feel like acquitting Kyle Rittenhouse of all charges demonstrates this pattern of injustice and harm that has especially been perpetuated within our criminal legal system for our black and brown communities. State Rep Valderrama there also spoke about her experience as an activist and organizer, encouraging people not to give up hope. She says justice is on the horizon. And despite those peaceful reactions, a few spots in downtown are cleaning up from a riot. About 100 people gathered near the Portland Police Precinct last night to protest the Rittenhouse verdict. Around 845, the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office says a couple dozen people stood in front of a vehicle gate at the Justice Center. Deputies say that group tampered with the gate while it was closed, and when it opened, people blocked it to keep it open. That's when the sheriff's office declared a riot. The crowd broke some windows, sprayed buildings with graffiti, and got a few and set a few small fires. Authorities arrested at least one person and gave out multiple citations and warnings. A new agency tasked with investigating police in Washington is now in high gear, and the two people who will decide who leads it have very different backgrounds. Drew Mickelson shares how the office will overhaul and oversee those investigations into deadly police encounters. The governor will be appointing the director of this new state agency from a short list that has to be agreed upon by two very different men. Are you guys going to be able to make this work? 
Oh, I, I definitely think so. On the surface, it's hard to ignore their differences. Tukwila Police Chief Eric Drever became a cop in the 1990s. I can vouch for the credibility of our team. Fred Thomas's son, Leonard Thomas, was shot and killed by police in 2013. The city of Lakewood ended up paying the family $12.5 million in a wrongful death lawsuit. I would have to say I'm an expert in a field where it went wrong from A to Z. But one piece of legislation has brought the men together. They're heading up the search for the director of the newly created Office of Independent Investigations, a state agency that will examine every case when someone is killed by police. Drever and Thomas are co-chairs of a board of 11, a mix of law enforcement, attorneys, and general citizens. We have a lot of, um, a lot more in common than we have, you know, against each other. In what was the first time the co-chairs had met in person, they made it clear there is room for improvement when it comes to holding police accountable. There has been narrative out there about, well, you know, it's just a few bad apples. And I, I know I'm stealing this quote from somebody, but, you know, it, shouldn't we be the one profession where we have no bad apples? To get to this point is a great start. And now we're putting really diverse people together who are willing, to, well, hopefully, we haven't met them all yet, hopefully we're all willing to find that ground. The same lawmakers who created the new office have a goal for next year. They also want independent prosecutors, rather than county prosecutors, to make the charging decisions in police use of deadly force cases. That's another topic those two co-chairs agree on. Now in Southern Oregon, this story is wild here. State troopers seized what they're describing as an epic amount of illegal marijuana, half a million pounds. Oregon State Police served a search warrant in White City, Oregon at five industrial sized warehouses. Investigators estimate that 500,000 pounds of seized marijuana has a street value around $500 million. Police detained, interviewed and released more than 100 people there. Some were migrant workers living on site without running water. All right, back locally, if you're into winter, then you're going to love Snowvana. It's all about snow sports, and it opened Friday at the Oregon Convention Center. And today, our Christelle Kumwe checked it out. She joins us live in studio now. Christelle, I can't really imagine snow at the convention center, but it does sound like this is more about the snow toys. Yes, indeed, Galen. The biggest snow sports festival in the Northwest is officially back in town and continues all weekend long. Even though snow levels are not quite where they need to be for resorts to be open, that isn't slowing down winter sports fans. The Oregon Convention Center is all about snow this weekend. Skiing, snowboarding, Nordic skiing, snow play, you name it. Snowvana is back in town. Snowvana is the celebration of snow sports, all snow sports. Event producer Doug Fish is especially ready to celebrate after last year's event was canceled because of the pandemic. It feels great to be back. Um, everyone here is just so energized to, to be back together and getting ready for the new season. Since their last show in 2019, they joined forces with Ski Fest. And now that we've combined the two shows, we have one gigantic celebration. A celebration where you can check out more than 90 activities and exhibits, plus a huge gear sale and ski swap. We're excited about the ski season and this is a beautiful venue. A crowd lined up Saturday morning for Snowvana's second day back on. Christina and Dan were first in line. We've skied many, many years and... Uh, Over 50. Uh, the pair drove three hours from Tacoma, Washington, just for the event. Super excited to see some activity and skiing going on again. While there are plenty of activities to see here, the skiing will have to wait. Yeah, well, when you see what's going on up here at the mountain, um, it's pretty obvious that we're not ready to open for guests to ski and ride. Mount Bachelor had to push back its opening day due to a lack of snow. Same scenario for Mount Hood Meadows and Timberline Lodge. Neither have an opening date set and leaving it all up to Mother Nature. If you like skiing or snowboarding, this is the place to be. Back at Snowvana, it's all about gearing up, anticipating a great snow season ahead. We, unfortunately, we can't ski or snowboard yet. The resorts aren't open quite yet, so this is the next best thing. 
Now, the event runs through tomorrow, Sunday. Everyone must show proof of vaccination or a negative COVID test. You can get your tickets online or at the door, but it's free for kids under 12. You can just go online at snovana.com for more information. Galen.